<laughs> All right. Hey, I'm uh, Dr. David Boskin. Uh, we're broadcasting this from uh, our Los Altos location uh, here in uh, Los Altos, California. And uh, are you going to put it on our bio and all that? Or? I am. Just you, hold on. Some just gonna pull that up here and yeah, exactly. we'll be good to go. So why don't you share a little bit about what we're going to do today and we'll get we'll yeah. started. All right. So we're talking a little bit about uh, pre-COVID, uh, uh, during COVID, and, and really post-COVID and how we've been able to, you know, leverage our operations uh, using Invisalign and uh, vibration and Propel and, and, and all that. So, uh, and then Nicole's got some some great sort of uh, update on kind of how we've been able to see new uh, patients during this time and what we were doing prior to COVID and what we're doing now and, and all of that. So, um, for those of you who are not familiar with me, uh, i been in practice for 20 years. I uh, own two offices, one in San Jose, one in Los Altos, California. Los Altos is right next to Palo Alto, in case you don't know the area. Uh, I've been in line faculty for uh, almost 21 years, actually. Wow. Oh, my old man. Old I'm man. I didn't say it. <laughs> Nicole's been in a line faculty for six years, five years, so you're still I mean, about to leave. I'm just like so. right out of college, so. Uh, we have, uh, Nicole and I created a company called the Liner IQ. That's, uh, an in-office immersion course that we offer. Uh, I am, uh, as a, um, uh, disclaimer, I'm a KOL, Clinical Advisory Board member of Propel Orthodontics, as well as Lightforce Orthodontics. And then <clears throat> we've, uh, treated over 4,500, over probably approaching close to 5,000 Invisalign patients that we've treated. Uh, in the last 20 years, uh, we are 98% Invisalign share of chair. Nicole has been here for with me for nine years. She uh, originally came from ADP, the payroll company. She was your your neighborhood uh, <laughs> payroll lady, right? Wow. Yes, she was the regional manager for 14 years. She's got sales in her blood. She's uh, got a great sense of understanding uh, who the consumer is, customer service. Um, I'm blessed to certainly have her part of, of this organization and my trusty COO. So, did I do Thank a good job that. of that intro? Or? Thank you for the intro. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, some of you might have, uh, you know, heard that company. It's called Blockbuster, Once Upon a Time. Uh, Netflix went to them twice, actually. Not once, but twice. They said, we want you to buy us. And Blockbuster said, no. We love our analog world. I think we all need to change this mindset of, of you know, there's certain products that we must have. There's a certain way of doing things that we've been doing these whatever forever. My father did this way or my grandparents did this way. I, I think the ultimate equalizer that's happened in the last two months has been a reset button. <clears throat> and I think that's the way that Nicole and I have kind of viewed it is that we've had time to kind of pause. You know, it kind of reminds me of Nicole, like Star Wars. I can't remember which one, but it's like when Obi-Wan is young and he's going up against Darth Maul and he basically can't get to him because this, this invisible wall comes up um, that times in and out. Okay. And so he's, he basically sits on the ground and like meditates and gets his his midichlorian you know his energy level up right and then the minute that that door reopens he charges in and you know he does this thing and i won't tell you that the, the suspense of it all in case you haven't seen it i'm not, I, I clearly i'm not i'm sure you have it. uh but the point is but that i can it, appreciate it i, I get that yeah i mean it's, it's reset us more than anything but i think one of the things that nicole and i have found ourselves in in the last two months is that we don't really feel like we've been playing defense at all we really feel like we've been maintaining our operations. And a lot of that is because we are a 100% digital office. We're 98% Invisalign share of chair. And uh, we are 2% braces, which we used to do a lot of uh, Damon brackets, but we've converted over about a year ago to light force orthodontics. And so that put us in a little bit different position in terms of when this came about, we were able to really leverage our existing platform of, of 
of uh, new consumers coming in that were starting already or a liner box is being delivered. We start you know, well over 800 Invisalign patients a year. So we're able to operationally keep moving that through. And so we were able to do you know, 150 plus curbside deliveries between the two offices. And it got me a, an incredible opportunity to reconnect with my patients going outside. And I think that we're probably going to keep leveraging the whole curbside experience, certainly for 2020. Uh, Absolutely. But I think I think more than anything, it's it's allowing all of us to kind of reset and to think about where we want to go uh, in the future, because we don't know if this is going to come back and whether or not SIP is going to happen again. Uh, but I think if you're in a digital mindset, you're in an efficiency mindset, and you're leveraging products like liner therapy, let's say Invisalign, and you're leveraging products like vibration or light uh, or mops, uh, then, then this is going to really help you in these sort of events. And, and I would say, Nicole's going to get kind of into the consumer part of things, but I, I would say that the consumer mindset is, is really changing as it has been from nine years ago when you came in, which you could talk about, and to where they are today. Now, yeah, so I, I thought we'd just talk a little bit about kind of what the consumer is looking for and how that's changed a little bit. For those of you who are used to having these, you know, 60 minute consultations with patients, mm -hmm. that's longer what the consumer is looking for. They want something that's efficient, that's fast, that's, um, you know, giving them answers to the questions that they're looking for right away. So. We already knew this about the consumer ahead of time, prior to COVID, and even more so now, we've been able to implement what the consumer is looking for. So they are able to contact us in uh, numerous amounts of ways. So number one, on our, our website, they can book appointments, they can request a virtual consultation, they can text us, they can call us if they really want to. But um, we have these things available because we knew it was was what the consumer wanted. So I wanted to at least give a little bit of a backup to say that, again, some of this stuff we already knew ahead of time, and then we kind of needed to put it in overdrive. So did we do virtual consultations prior? Yes, we did. Do we do as many as we're doing today? No. So we, we're gonna go through kind of what we did in response and what we think we're gonna continue to do. Like Dr. Boschman said, for sure, the curbside pickups, and uh, virtual appointments, virtual consultations. We've got to do things differently to adjust to the current climate. So I think it's just about being ready and being able to adapt. You know, uh, I, I just don't think we're really in control of the things around us so we can control in terms of, okay, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to put in place? What about our own attitude and kind of how are we going to move forward? So that would be kind of, my thought on that. So from here, we thought we'd kind of go into a, a Q&A in terms of what we did the day that it was announced uh, that we were going to do shelter in place. It's an IPR and elastics and all of that. And they, they were then starting to be delivered. Well, what do we do with those patients? And then what do we do with those patients that are already in treatment and they need to get their second box or a third box or whatever? So I, I think we just, there was, there's no playbook on this. No. I, I think I literally just started saying, calling patients, and I, I, I called every one of our patients in both offices uh, for the, maybe the first six weeks, I've probably been lagging the last two weeks, but, uh, and yeah, I, I think I just said, hey, how about curbside delivery? Uh, I'll come out to your car, glove, mask, we'll have a little chat. Uh, yeah, so that evolved where so I, think evolved. I, I reached out to patients, I made sure that they, they knew how to get a hold of us. So. We did a pop-up on our website to say, hey, you know, we are closed, which is really interesting. Some people still showed up for an appointment, like, like they didn't know what was going on. So yes, we're closed. How do you get a hold of us? Text, email, you know, what's the point there? And then the point person there, not the point there, but who's the point person? How to do that? And so I did that and I made sure that we were over communicating. We did it on social media. We've done several videos. And the reason that we're trying to over communicate with our patients is because we want to connect with them. We want to find a way so that they, they have the information that they need. And then Dr. Boschkin and calling all the patients, I think you, you really built that connection, but you also built value so that they felt like 
they were surprised if they got a phone call most of them they were really surprised they were like i've never heard from this guy on the phone <laughs> But we were building value, Absolutely. you know, some, we, we were listening to some podcasts here and there where the doctors were concerned about people stopping their automatic credit card payments. Mm -hmm. We never had a single patient do that. And, and I don't know if we're yeah. just, that was, you know, I mean, we're thankful we're for, we're that, thankful but for yeah. that. And, uh, but we built value that way. And what's interesting is that there are a lot, especially as I got deeper into calling, like we're talking about three weeks in, four weeks, five weeks in, the conversations got longer. The moms or the dads <laughs> or the patients wanted to talk more. Yeah, They're, they were so. So, what are you? What are you doing right now? I'm like, well, I'm in the office just chatting and calling patients. And yeah. oh, they started telling me about what they had for dinner last <laughs> night. And you, you didn't know when to cut it off. Yeah, similar to some of those. I, Zoom I got calls. a list here. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, having been on a Zoom call where it's it, you don't have a reason to get off the phone. I mean, you and I are working, but yeah. a lot of times it's it's hard to get people off the phone right now because I think we're all dying for some human interaction for sure. So that would be the things that we did in terms of communication. And I think we continue to do that throughout uh, and throughout the six, seven, eight weeks, wherever we're at now is we're continuing to communicate. And um, our next goal is to communicate about what the actual opening is gonna look like. And we'll talk about that in, in terms of kind of at the end of the webinar, what's post COVID, what does that look like? What does re-entry look like? Mm -hmm. All of that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what about, what did we do in terms of um, new patients and capturing those and, and trying to bring in some kind of revenue because it stopped? Yeah, right? yeah de definitely it stops. I mean, I'll talk about uh, the, the prior to COVID, obviously our system of, of bringing people in was, uh, we have kind of a concierge approach. They come in, they're escorted into the consult room. And at that point, um, our TC goes in, asks them to put in questions, and then they come and get me. And they let me know, hey, we're the third consultation, and they had prior ortho, whatever it might be. And then I come in, and just one of the first questions I always ask is, what don't you like about your smile? I already kind of know. I've already heard from, let's say, Nicole. She's giving me information. Um, but I want to really hear it from them. Um, you know where I got that from? What don't you like about your smile? I do, but you can tell the story. I got it from Nip Tuck. I don't know if you remember that show. It was like 15 years ago. Dobie Perro, I think, was in uh, kindergarten at the time. But, but uh, <laughs> are you calling people out? Yeah, of course. You know, he's a young kid. You know, and uh, but yeah, it was like 20, 15 years ago. Uh, Nip Tuck, and they used to always go into their consultation and say, "What don't you like about yourself?" So it's one of the open-ended questions that we always ask: is what, you, what don't you like about your smile? And it's amazing what you get back, actually. Um, and then I'll do the intro oral exam. And at that point, I'll fire off all these things, you know, midlines off, class two, whatever. And meanwhile, Nicole's putting it all on the computer. And then I'll, and then I'll, I want them to hear all that. It's important to, to verbalize that. Cause when they, when they hear like over jets, five millimeters and midlines off two, two millimeters to the left and class two and four millimeters of crowding, you want them to hear that full mess. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, and really at that point, it, it's my job to be able to say, you know, I think you definitely need some orthodontics. Um, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to have one of my assistants come in and take some records. We're going to take some x-rays and photos. We're also going to scan your mouth. And we kind of point to the scanner right there. And we have three scanners in each office. So we have six scanners total. And we're able to leverage that scanner. Uh, and, and we explain that it has all the algorithms and the coding built in uh, to give you a rough draft uh, of your smile. So we'll be able to show you really what you're going to look like at the end of treatment before you leave today. Sort of a wow factor. And they love that. And at that point, I'm going to have then, I'm going to talk to Nicole about your treatment. She's going to go through your diagnosis, your treatment plan, the products recommending. And then I will say, I will, I'll look at Nicole and I'll say, Nicole, I, I will be recommending Invisalign. And that way, that way they hear it. That way they hear the doctor prescribing a certain product or technique or whatever to the treatment coordinator. And then I'm also gonna have Nicole walk you through the timing as well as the cost. Hey, how does that sound? Great. And then, and then I leave my assistants right there. The first thing they do is always the scan. And it's important to take that scan. It just takes a couple minutes, but it also gives, let's say, Nicole or my treatment coordinators the time to actually build out the uh, outcome simulation. And Nicole can talk to you about the techniques on that. Uh, and, and at that point, uh, I don't go in, I used to say 80% of the time I don't go back in. I, I think it's probably closer to 90% of the time I don't go back in. 
uh, because if you train your TCs well, um, they're really the ones that are that are better off explaining treatment and explaining timing and products and costs and all of that. Um, doctors love to get in the weeds. Uh, they love to get nerdy on on the on cross bites and class twos and all that. And no wonder why consults take an hour. Uh, and, and meanwhile, there are other things that the doctor could be doing operationally in the office. Not to mention, you know customer service and taking the time to talk to moms and, uh, you know, or going outside and doing a, you know, a social media shoot or something like that. Uh, and so those are the things that that's sort of the process of how come we, we work through that. Right. So in terms of what we did during COVID and what we will continue to do after is our virtual consultation is very similar to what they get in the office, except we're not taking official records. So, we have used SmileSnap. I'm, I know there's other things out there, but one of the things that our patients are able to do is go onto our website and it says click here for a virtual consultation and they're able to take pictures and upload them directly to us. So we're able to see, you know, they'll pull whatever their, their finger back, the spoon back, whatever it might look like, but we have some, some kind of records to go off of. And we do it exactly like I said, what, what they did when they came in. So I will start out the consultation. At least now I'm doing that. I will train other people how to do that once we go um, back full time. But I'll just connect with the patient. And the patient on the other side is in their area where they're comfortable. So they're in their home um, and they are, you know, they're comfortable making decisions and connecting with you at that point, which puts us at an advantage in terms of, of getting them in that comfort level. And I'll ask them, what's important to you? You know, what's important to you about your smile? What would you like to see fixed? You, you've probably heard this so many times before, but as an orthodontist, we, they look in the mouth and you see everything that's wrong. But usually our patients, when they're coming in, there's just this one tooth, this one little tooth that they want fixed and they don't see everything else. So we really want to make sure that we're, we're diving in on what that is. And so I'll walk through um, that conversation with them and then I'll go basically brief Dr. Boschkin, who's already looked at the photos online and then he'll come in he'll connect with the patient and give them exactly what we just went through. Hey, you'd be an excellent candidate for Invisalign, here's about the timing, and then and then I'll go through the products. I'll show them the type on. I'll show them the, the vibration device. I'll show them all over camera, just like we're doing now. And then I'll share my screen, just like I did with you with some slides, and I'll go through the financials with them, and I'll give them different options. So this usually takes about 30 minutes, and it's really easy to do because it's what we've been doing. So it's a way to kind of capture and and I would say, I mean, this morning I actually just scheduled four more. It was crazy. They just kept popping in. So people are looking to do this. And it's not just 20-year-olds. Well, we had one yesterday. We did a few yesterday. But one of them, this was her third virtual consultation. True. And what'd she say? And she said we were the most thorough. <laughs> so, so that was good. We got a thumbs up there. <laughs> but people are doing virtual consultations. That's what's out there. And people are, are interested in doing it. So, yeah, absolutely. So will we continue to do that? Oh, absolutely. I actually think that it's going to be our primary initial line for consultations. And then we're, and before then they even before come they come in. Because we, I think what we found is that our virtual consultations are more likely to convert mm -hmm. to actual patients. Um, and, and really most of your patients coming in, especially, you know, millennials, um, Gen Z, uh, they really have those three questions. Will it work? That is Invisalign. How much and how long? And if you, if you answer those questions on a virtual sense, and that's why we, we, we incorporated photography into this whole process, uh, is that you, you can give a better sense of timing and cost. And that really answers most people's questions. At that point, they're more likely to come into your office. So effectively, what we've been doing for eight weeks is building out our pipeline. One of the things I wanted to add into prior to me describing our consultation process, I sort of like lost track there, which is Nicole asked, so what were you doing prior to this? Well, the whole point of me explaining the whole consultation process to you uh, was, was this idea that we have all the records. We don't have 100% same day starts. Um, we've been Panici trained and other consultants uh, over the years. And as much as we would love to be 100%, we're not. We're probably 50%, would you say? If, 
same day starts. Same day, but not 50% total. I no, I mean, we're, we're in the high 90s in terms of overall starts, but it's but same day is roughly about 50% because people need to take the time to, for various reasons. Right. And what turned out to be a blessing was that Nicole was able to start uh, upwards of 15 patients in the last eight weeks uh, due to the fact that we already have the records. Mm -hmm. and, and we're specifically talking about adults and teens. Obviously, we're 100% Invisalign phase one using FIRST. Uh, we weren't able to use those scans because they're only relevant for a couple of weeks, but we were able to source, I think the longest one was a, a scan that we was taken a year and a half yeah. ago, almost two years ago for an adult Came in a couple days ago, snapped right in, no problem at all. So that's what I mean by being offensive and not in a defensive position. In case this happens again, having those records is critical. Why would we take x-rays and photos but not a scan before somebody leaves? And the fact that we're at 50%, let's say same day starts, we don't care. We, I mean, yeah, it'd be nice if we were 80%, but I don't really care about that metric. Um, what I care about is, is that are they starting eventually? And they often start the same day, the next day, a week later, we do all of our documents through DocuSign. We've been 100% DocuSign for maybe about three years now, and that's all due to Nicole because she got tired of contracts and sliding them across the table or, or waiting for somebody to come back in to sign everything. You know, once those records are done, you don't come back in. The next time you come back in is when we deliver the aligners. And you really need to think direct to consumer on that. Candico, SDC, these companies have, have actually made it super efficient for this new consumer that wants that. Nicole's gonna kind of go into who that consumer is and slide the top yeah. of that slide. Absolutely. So yeah, I would say DocuSign or some type of um, software that you can use that you can directly get to them would be, um, has been a huge help to us. And it, it just, you know, it's one less visit that they have to come to the office. And as much as we think our patients love to see us, they all have really busy lives. And again, now with COVID, they don't want to see as many in-person, you know, appointments. So I thought we'd actually go into what we're doing with our, what we did with our mm -hmm. current patients. So in terms of current patients, let's talk about the ones that we had to do curbside delivery. Um, what did that look like? Did we, you know, we couldn't do the attachments. We couldn't mm -hmm. do IPR. What did that look like? And, um, this is a Propel webinar. How did we use vibration or how, what techniques did we use to help help us during that time? No, it's a good question. And, and actually, just to back up for a second, you know, Cole was able to start 15, roughly 15 patients during the last eight weeks. And so all of those ClinChecks were mm -hmm. set up with what I call the Corona ClinCheck. Uh, my technician in Costa Rica knows what a Corona ClinCheck is. Uh, at least that's my own calling. You don't, don't don't message to a line saying, give me Corona ClinCheck. They don't know what that is. Um, this is all me. Those are ClinCheck's that are ultimately no attachments, no IPR. So I'm going old school. We're talking about 1998, 99 with Invisalign, uh, where we used to expand and procline a lot more. Uh, and then of course, IPR was added in, elastics and all that kind of stuff. And in terms of the the existing patients that are already pushed the button, aligners were being delivered, attachments were needed. Um, we did a lot of curbside where we delivered the first two aligners. We placed attachments for all teens and adults at aligner number three for all of our Invisalign first cases. The attachments were placed at aligner number one for various retentive uh, reasons. But uh, we had to deliver those first two aligners. Well, we tried to get them wearing them for two weeks at a time, which is Okay, we used to do that for years, uh, but we got into a situation where it just seemed like this was going on and on. Mm -hmm. So there were a number of cases where I was just like, okay, forget it. Give the next you know, box of aligners. We're not gonna worry about cylinderization. We're not gonna worry about elastics. We're not gonna worry about uh, attachments and that's okay. And, and if we get you know, towards the end of that box, we can always reboot and do additional aligners. If we feel like we're gonna go and vet through all the aligners and we'll get to 90%, I'm super happy with that. We'll always rescan and, and we'll be able to do that final calibration. So will some teeth stick because of the lack of space? Absolutely. Will some teeth not rotate or, or certain vertical movements not get um, executed because of lack of attachments? Absolutely. Were some AP issues, especially if you're using motion appliances up above or if you're using uh, elastics, uh, not get fully expressed, 
let's say the distillation cases, yeah, of course. Um, but we were okay with that. We, we were certainly willing to keep the operations going. And then as we're starting, starting to flow patients back into our office, we'll be able to do evaluate on a case-by-case -case situation whether or not it makes sense to reboot it or not. Well, one thing I was queuing like. you up for as well oh, yeah. is just how we were able to use vibration in this time. So this thing? That thing, this yes. Thing. Yes. <laughs> So I would say that because we, we might have some tracking issues, not only because of the attachments, but also because, you know, people are, are not wanting to put their hands in their mouth, not wanting to touch things. They might not be wearing the aligners as much as they did prior to this. That, that's what we've seen. So one of the things that really helped to keep people on track and has helped is, mm -hmm. is vibration. So we've been able to use that. We use it for all our new patients that we did curbside delivery to just mm -hmm. to help with that. But also our current patients that were already using it, that's kind of helped fill that void um, to help, you know, continue with that predictability, right? Yeah, and where do you stand on, on a device that's vibration or not? You know, for us, we've been using Propel products, uh, MOPS, micro -SC preparation, uh, light, uh, vibration, uh, really since the beginning of the company about eight or nine years ago and what I've seen over the years uh, it's proven you know time and time again is that my patients that, that ultimately use the vibration treat out better uh, they feel zero pain uh, and, and and there's a lot of research that are that's supporting this uh, they uh, are feeling much more attached to treatment because they have a sequence and they know switching out weekly uh, we're able to, you know, watch them sort of remotely as well. And using, you know, vibration like this, um, they're able to seat the aligners tighter. And when you go to an office like us, where we started our vision four years ago, when we were 40% of design for 15 years and decided we wanted to go to 100%, you know, we knew that we, we had to tackle the craziest cases out there to get to a where we are today at 98 percent and and certainly the final frontier was phase one so we really needed to incorporate four years ago the full aspect of of interceptive ages six to ten you know phase one treatment but we also needed to tackle much more complex adult cases and i think what's been a, a blessing for us and and certainly is the equalizer and all that has been the vibration and mops and and and, and that's what helps us get deeper into the pool so to speak uh, it's what sort of uh, allows us to feel confident rendering uh, a liner therapy to these patients that we know we're going to get the, the desired outcome. So we, we've really been able to leverage this certainly during the COVID and, and we will certainly after COVID as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that the other thing that we wanted to touch on in terms of connecting with our patients is we're offering, we, we talked about the curbside. Um, we talked about virtual consultations with new patients, but we're also having virtual appointments with patients where we connect with them on Zoom or go to meeting and we're able to connect and they're able to show us their fit, ask some questions. And again, it's just another way to connect. And I, I think we're going to continue those appointments as well, because if they don't have to come into the office for IPR or attachments, we'll continue to, to definitely have another column where we're seeing them there. Yeah, um, and I actually like that. We, we've, we've done, you know, with our uh, our phase one cohort, um, where we still use about 60% of the time, we use an RPE on the upper, and then we do lower Invisalign at the same time. We, I always built out uh, 20 lower aligners, switching out weekly or bi-weekly. So I have plenty of time as we're expanding the upper arch uh, during that two to three months we're able to coordinate, you know, all of that, but it's, it's, it, it works out well, you know, when, when you're trying to leverage it, this digital journey that you're on, you know, it's, it's really important to um, use your the scanner as much as you can to really show your patients kind of where you're going with all this treatment. And, and so that's something that I think we really miss. And we're, we certainly, when patients come back, we're going to incorporate that more and more. Absolutely. And then the final thing that I think we're doing with our new patients and current patients is we're also just doing some virtual monitoring. So that, that might not be this face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, through um, the Invisalign app. And I know there's other ways to do this as well. They're able to, every time they switch to a new aligner, they're taking a picture. It's going directly to Dr. Boshkin, who's then communicating back and forth mm -hmm. on the fit. 
And again, it's just one more way to connect mm -hmm. with our patients and build more value without them ha actually having to come come down to the office. So. Yeah, and those RPE patients that we just talked about, it's like it's great because we can just view them over Zoom and, mm -hmm. and that's sort of our new normal even after all this likely where we're gonna end up keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, and we're reading questions, by the way, if you want to put in questions that you have, we will spend the last 15 minutes just doing Q&A, but I see already someone said, no attachment? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Audra? Or, uh, yeah. That was only for COVID, by the way, okay, no attachments, although there's a, there's definitely a contingent of, of doctors around the world that, um, that use no attachments in the first round of aligners. Uh, and then any additional fine-tuning fine additional liners, they'll add some attachments at that point. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm obviously a pretty big fan of attachments, although I think with G7 optimized attachments, posterior attachments, I think it got probably a little out of hand in the last couple of years where every bicuspid and you know first molar and second molar has an attachment on. Uh, that's difficult to, to place uh, in the posterior and it, not every patient wants that many. And so uh, that's a whole nother lecture there, of course, but, uh, <laughs> just to, but yeah, I'm, I'm only saying no attachments, just those were the ones that we had to set up because we knew we probably weren't going to be able to see them for a while. Right. You were just trying to move with the new climate yeah. and what that looks like. So, so I think that's our current patients. And then um, anything else that we did or, or technology that we use during the time that you can think of we want to review. We almost hit on everything I was going to start talking everything. about post-COVID and kind of what we've done to communicate. So I'm going to share my screen again and just give you a little background of what that looks like. But I think it looks similar to, um, to really what we just talked about in terms of how we communicate with our patients. So this, by the way, this just gives you a little snapshot of how our patients uh, can communicate with us. They've got three different ways uh, to schedule a consultation, request an appointment, and then to do that, that virtual consultation. And the one on the far left there, um, we actually put appointments that are available for them to come in. These are small appointments where almost like a, like a, like a retail store model where they can come in and, and take some uh, quick scan to see whether or not they qualify for Invisalign. And at that point, depending on our timing, we would either reschedule them or we could then build out a consultation. But we, we throw up uh, a few times every day. Those are typically, those, those times are the less desirable. If you're looking at a heat map, it's not gonna be you know, the first two hours in the morning and the, first two, the last two hours in the afternoon. It's gonna be probably the, the 10.30 to 2.30 kind of time range. Right, and that way, if we double book it, it's fine, but, but we wanna make sure that again, we are ensuring that we're capturing the consumer that's out there and what they're looking for. We want to make sure that everyone finds a way to get to us in terms of how they want to communicate. So that's that. Um, just a little summary in terms of what we've talked about. So. Oh, we didn't talk about the Invisalign virtual care. Yeah, so we've been piloting number six there. We've been piloting the Invisalign virtual care for about three months now. We have almost, 30 patients that are in, you know, in it, which just essentially corresponds to all the new patients that we delivered during <clears throat> the, the shutdown. Um, and so this is great because they're able to uh, take photographs uh, every week and upload them to us. And then we're able to remotely monitor their, their, their treatment. So this is part of the Invisalign app. This is just a new feature on the app. And uh, that's being rolled out. Uh, throughout uh, the United States um, in waves. So if you haven't gotten it yet, talk to your rep. Uh, but it's just a great, it's, it's a free service that Align is, has, has designed and um, uh, the, the new iterations coming out, there's a couple waves coming out, but essentially um, it's pretty exciting where this goes using the, the ClinCheck algorithms and, and, and everything that kind of, you know, can piggyback on the photos and, to give us a, a great sense of monitoring your cases and staying connected, so. Yeah, no, that's been great. And, and the patients really like it too. They're excited about getting getting comments and, and getting like a thumbs up if they're doing yeah. well and all of that. And there's a picture of you delivering curbside with your mask and. Yeah, I think it's important to just keep going with your, your social media. I mean, I, this is my, my private account, uh, my private Facebook and, and I guess Instagram. 
but yeah, I, we constantly kept posting and just examples of what we're doing. So our patients felt connected and yeah. um, obviously my, my, my good buddy, uh, Dobie, uh, is always an inspiration for me. So, uh, uh, I'm always just trying to stay up, you know, somewhat current with, with this guy and, and, but he's, he's obviously a great inspiration and we, we try to, to, to try to stay connected as much as we can with yeah. our patients. So let's go into now kind of how, how we're going to re-enter. What is that going to look like and what, what steps have we taken kind of as a team? So number one, you know, we've, we've talked about the value of communicating with patients, but what about your team members? Our team members have been furloughed for, you know, quite a few weeks here and we wanted to make sure that we kept in contact with them. So we did weekly Zoom team meetings. And we just connected, just kind of a, a touch point, want to make sure everyone's doing okay. And we want to continue to build our culture and just feel like we're connecting and we're not going on a, you know, eight week break or whatever that may mm -hmm. be. So there was a little bit of like tough love at times that you had to kind of give them, right? Like, <laughs> like get out of bed, yeah. make sure you keep showering, keep exercising. Was there, there was probably a little bit of that back channel. I, I, I was joking when it was time to get back, like, hey, you, this is coming, like, you got to be able to fit into your work pants again. Like we got to get out of our, our sweatpants, but it, it's more of just like a, you know, it, it was definitely good to reset and stop. Um, but we also wanted to make sure that we're, we're getting them ready to, to get back in the game. So in terms of that, we've also done zoom trainings with them to talk about what the PPE equipment looks like, what the new normal looks like, training them on that so that when they come in, they also feel really comfortable. So why don't you talk about what the curbside check-in looks like and how we greet patients? Yeah, and it really starts from, from the front office, so which has really been Nicole, frankly, for, for the last eight weeks. We now have um, some of our front office team back in both offices. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, either through phone, texting, or email, the expectation of what it's going to look like when they when they come in, um, we have a, a questionnaire that's being built out that that, that will you know be able to send out to um, through DocuSign to the patients prior to coming in. But but effectively, what we explain to them is there is that uh, the new waiting room or the new reception room is your car, um, and so when they show up, they have to have a mask. And then one of our, my assistants or myself will come out to the car, ask them a few questions, a few additional questions. Have they been out of the country? Anybody in the family have COVID, have been sick, any temperature issues? We, of course, with them, we'll check their temperature. And we also let them all know um, that we're also checking our, our team um, just to make sure that everybody else is healthy, you know, in, inside as well. Um, only patients are allowed in the building. So moms, dads, grandparents, friends, aunt and uncles, nobody's allowed in but the parents. What about their, um, their dog allowed? No, I wish they, we could bring the dog in, but we're not. <clears throat> so it's basically just the, the patient, uh, obviously if they're underage and if they're overage, just obviously the adult. And then at that point, uh, we, as we explain at the car that we're gonna be bringing you in, keep the mask on, we're gonna have you go wash your hands uh, for 20 seconds. That's, you know, wheels on the bus twice or happy birthday twice. We're then gonna have you rinse out with, um, with an oral care uh, uh, mouth rinse, which will kill COVID if it's in the mouth. Hopefully they don't have it, but it will kill and everything. That's not what we say to the patient by. It, but no, we don't say it will kill. Yeah. We'll say it will make yes. your mouth really we just, clean. We just give a mouthwash. Now, you know, do a product placement or something there. I don't know what I'm <laughs> doing, but uh, and then at that point, uh, we escort them to the chair. We've had everything set up. My team is team is dressed in the normal, you know, masks, facial, you know, gowns, and uh, and then at that point, we we know what we're doing on that patient. So obviously, a lot of these initial. I think some of the, we, we started seeing emergency patients last week uh, and we're obviously seeing more this week. And so what emergency classifies are in, in our office is that we had a number of RPEs, expanders that we didn't um, insert. We had the lower liners delivered and so we were able to curbside those, but then we didn't deliver the RPE because it was abruptly, we all, the offices stopped on March 16th. In retrospect, I, and again, if this ever happens, okay, I won't say it, but those are the things that we want to immediately get in if we ever have to shut again. So we were able to bring those back last week and there was probably half a dozen RPEs between the two offices. Thankfully, the 
after eight weeks or so, separators were still in uh, and the RPEs all went in. And of course, we, with our RPEs, um, it's all scanning. We don't fit the bands ourselves. We haven't done that in four years. Uh, we uh, scan and uh, with the iTero scanner, we outsource it to a lab to have those RPEs made. So super accurate and they fit well. And that's really what it is. It's social distancing when they're here, immediately when the procedure is done. It, we then walk them back out to the car. So there's no scheduling done here. There's no payment, whatever. Everything is done virtually. And, and, and that way it keeps the office flowing well, super clean. And, and, and also, you know, it, I think we have to be somewhat sensitive to our team mm -hmm. uh, because we've had a lot of time here in the office to process what this looks like. We've had the benefit of, of a lot of podcasts that we've either given or listened to. And so I think we're a little bit farther ahead of, of what's going on. And so uh, I, I think now the team after a week and a half, uh, the select team that we have is, is kind of feeling more comfortable about all this. So just to clarify, what we decided to just see what we felt were emergency patients. And for us, that, that's what that looked like. Also people that had had an expander in for too long and um, there was swelling or something like that. So, you know, everyone has to come up with that on their own. Everyone has to have a comfort level that they have enough PPE equipment, that their team is trained. But these are all things that you, you can begin doing now if you haven't already, is start to prepare, start to do those Zoom trainings, start to get your team ready so that, um, so that you have this all set up. And I know it can feel overwhelming, um, but I think that once you, you have the procedures in place and, and practice it a little bit, um, we're all going to get through this. So, so that was that. And then the other thing that we wanted to just quickly go over was how do we humanize this experience? You know, most of our practices as orthodontic offices, it's the fun place to come. It's like, let's go, you know, to my orthodontic appointment and we get to play on the iPad and we get to get a coffee and, and we get to chat with our friends and, and the, you know, reception area was a place of hustle and bustle and it was a fun atmosphere. And so, gosh, how do we continue to keep that alive with, you know, a mask, a face shield, you know, you've got the whole gown. They don't, and you have they don't to know if they're smiling. Yeah, <laughs> they don't. So, so we've talked about just a few things that we have really in been intentional about wanting to keep that experience. Right? Well, one of the things is that when, when we, you've gone outside and done all the vitals and asked the mm -hmm. questions, we bring them in, you know, we, we've, we've really, I think Nicole and I worked on the team that's come back to make it a celebration uh, and say, oh my gosh, Jody's here. And it's like, again, Jody's the only one in the building. Like right. make it for the kids, make, for the kids, for the kids yeah. you know, and, and even the adult though, like, yeah. wow, it's a, you know, like, it's we just want some level of excitement. And, and, you know, we always had Otter Pops around or, you know, it, but you can always do curbside coffee. You could ask the mom, hey, what would you like? And do espressos. And, and we have a pretty big coffee bar here that we can, generate stuff dip and dots is like a big hit as well uh but but any of that stuff something especially in the summer months to build some value because right. it can't be robotic it can't be like okay come in don't touch anything wash your hands sit down okay now go like right. leave right. like that's that's not scalable that's not fun and i think it's it's probably buying into the hype or the hysteria of all of this and not to minimize at any level what people have gone through or going through but uh, we need to maintain our operations and 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 uh, according to our own standards and what what i guess has been surprising for me is that is that we should have been maybe open a few weeks ago when i think about orthodontic offices that we are a sterile environment we know what we're doing we know how to put on a glove and a mask and protect ourselves and our patients and uh, and anyway, that's another story, but <laughs> we won't get political on that. But the other thing is, um, is just like kind of what you were alluding to in terms of remaining calm. So Dr. Boschkin, those of you that know him, he's a little bit of a whirlwind. He is always moving. He is running around. He is all about efficiency. And I think in this environment, we've all had to kind of take a step back and, and make sure that we aren't rushing around the office, that we are remaining calm, um, you know, not 
depressed, but just calm and not rushing because they want to know that you're spending the time on them. They also might be feeling anxious. And if you are anxious as a doctor or a team member, they're going to feed off of that. They're going to see that right away. So you've got to be able to, just like you do when you recommend treatment and you tell them what you're going to you know, be able to do, it's the same kind of confidence that you have to have when they come in. So just make sure you're checking yourself on that. You know, and I, I think it can be hard. It's not going to happen perfectly every day, but just some things to think about. Um, and then just over communicating, you know, they can, if they can't see your mouth, they can see your eyes, they can see a smile through your eyes, but, um, but make sure you're taking that time to, to connect with them. So, and then when I say, just take it one day at a time, one day at a time, you know, I get through this, like just stay, just stay positive and just know we're going to get through this. So, yeah. Um, so, so that's what we're. That's what we're looking for here. I'm just going to take this off, come back. All right, here we are. We're back. We might have always been there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so based on that, that, that hits us, you know, at about the 45 minute mark. And so we'd like to open it up for Q and A, and and start with that. If you guys have questions of, you know, different things that we've done that might be of value, we're we're happy to answer those questions. In the meantime, though, what? <laughs> so what are you looking for mostly, you know, coming back oh. to the office? Like, what's the, what's the, once the team comes back, like, what's your thing? Well, I think, um, we kind of talked about this last night. I'm, I'm excited, number one, when the team comes back, just to be able to connect with them again. I've missed having them around for sure. But the other thing I mentioned too, which still stands true today, is that I, I haven't been able to, we haven't been able to travel. Like, I am, at some point, you know, I'll be excited to be able to go on some kind of trip. So that's me. Yeah. How about you? I just want to go to a restaurant and like sit and not like eat in my car or <laughs> uh, find or a bench that, you know, isn't marked off. Like True. I'm kind of a rule breaker anyway. So I sit on those chairs anywhere. Uh oh, you might get slapped for that. Tables out there anyway, but. <laughs> Um, anyway, well, I don't know if we have any questions. Does, does it look like there's, I guess there's, um, we, were, we were not, unless it's, we have to roll it down, oh, Nicole. Maybe. Okay. You want to roll it down? You're better at that than I am. Oh, thank you. What chat system? What chat system do you use, Nicole? A little bit bigger. So the way that we oh, there chat, there we go. Oh, wow. So the way that we chat with patients, there's a chat feature online. It's um, Ruby receptionist that we use right now that they're able to answer questions for our patients and then in terms of texting we use solution reach to be able to go back and forth with our patients and um, hopefully that that's answering those questions um, what the, one of the questions is on here is that how what does our schedule look like uh, how are you spacing out uh, people um, I think it's a great question, um, Audra. Like, you, you know, when we were on our digital journey starting four years ago, and we were at 40% Invisalign share of chair, uh, we uh, we were seeing 100 patients a day, and we just kind of hit a wall, and I won't go through the long story, but effectively, I didn't see 40 years of seeing 100 patients a day as a viable thing or a fun thing, and, and, uh, and when we finally went to within, it took about 24 months to get to 98% Invisalign, Chair of chair, and 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 we went from 100 patients to would you say around 40 to 40, 45 to 50 patients a day, but we could see more consults. So we're coming back into this not not overly whelmed by 100 patients a day kind of thing. That's not our practice anymore. We we're because we see our Invisalign patients every 14 to 16 weeks because we leverage Propel and 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 vibration. And we, we feel confident and through monitoring that we know we, we, we see these people 14, 16 weeks. And Nicole and I used to kind of jockey back and forth. I'm much more into efficiency. Nicole's much more into the customer service. Somewhere in between, we would compromise. Yeah. Uh, the consumer today, or, the, or I should say consumer, I should say the existing patient today is much more into the efficiency. Uh, and so they're looking to not come into the office as much. So we have to build value in other ways. But I think what our schedule is looking like moving forward is, you know, maybe our two weeks from now, we'll be at maybe 20 patients a day. Right now, we're at between 
four and eight a day, uh, just so we're just kind of testing the waters and doing a little beta. Right. Uh, but so maybe, we see with emergencies, it'd be one an hour. Once we go back on June 1st, um, we're going to have basically we have four different columns. So they've got to be six feet apart. And it, depending on which office that looks like, it's really only uh, two patients in the open bay at a time and then one taking records or in a consultation. Um, so we won't have really any more than three people in the office at a time because we want to maintain that social distancing. So you, I think as an office, kind of have to figure that out, but that's how we did it. And then we will have a column for our virtual appointments as well. So I'll have an assistant managing virtual appointments and then two assistants in the bay with Dr. Boschkin and then one available for our consultation. So hopefully that is helpful. It says, um, what service are you using for website visitors to schedule online? That's a uh, rooster, rooster grin. Rooster grin. For that. Yeah, we're good about that. One person asks, um, do you find that taking patients or asking patients to take photos is a barrier to the virtual consultation? Not at all. I don't I mean, you haven't seen that at all. In fact, actually, I'm actually mandating it because we have smile snap. I'll say to Nicole, like, where are the photos? And they're like, well, they didn't take them. And, and so she'll reach back and they'll take them. And, and, and it's all, you know, selfies and stuff. And it just gives me a sense of, of, of their bite and, you know, the crowding, spacing, whatever. It just gives me a better interpretation because I, I am giving them an estimate of cost and an estimate of timing. And obviously, it's not the final exam. The, the, the final exam is when they come back in for the first time in the office, we'll then schedule a 30 minute appointment. I'll come in quickly, look in their mouth. We'll do our own photos, x ray scan at that point. Uh, but at that point, they already know the timing, they already know the cost. And Nicole was able to get probably a dozen patients or so to start treatment during the last eight weeks. Uh, she was offering a little bit of a, a COVID sort of promotion. And, and so that's how we kind of built out the pipeline. So they've already signed DocuSign and all the documents. So they're just coming in just to get records and see me for the first time. I think it's about how you're explaining it. So I haven't really, I haven't had pushback. If they don't complete the pictures, I'll reach out to them and just explain why, why they are so important so that they can really have a thorough exam and make the most of that 30 minutes. So just all about messaging. I, I think that that's helpful. And then disposable surgical gowns, where are we getting them? I mean, I think we're all in a pinch on that. We use Zen Supply, which is our, our management supply system. When you have multiple offices, it's nice to see a dashboard of your inventory across multiple locations. And we do all the ordering on there as well. I'm, I'm not a paid sponsor, then I'm not trying to promote the company, but we use Zen Supply. So when you go on, uh, we're able to then order masks, gloves, whatever it might be, but it's across all vendors from Shine to Amazon. And it's all right on one platform for us to do that. So uh, the ordering of that is, has been going on and we seem to still be getting, There's it, still it, it trickles in yeah. all these supplies, including the, uh, the gowns as well. I think what all of us have learned from this is to have a PPE section in your office uh, I know some offices, like the gloves are on this side of the building and the masks are on that side of the building and you don't really know what your inventory is. Hopefully one of the things that you've done other than clean your garage at home is also clean out your office and really organize your PPE. So you know exactly how many gloves, masks, gowns, shields, all that kind of stuff that you have uh, because um, I think that's an important you know, thing to do. Yeah. Is that all the questions? We. Um, what's your office software? We use Tops, you've been using it for eight or nine years, love it, never had any issues, great for multiple locations. Um, I mean, some people love, uh, you know, other other products out there, but it's worked yeah. for us. Um, I think that's all. Um, and so, yeah, on the ordering, um, you know, I have enough for our team to use, but I'm constantly going back back on and reordering. I'm sure this is something that we're all going to be dealing with. We also had some surgical gowns prior, so we've, we've got that. But There's a question about a handpiece and using it, maybe. I, I can't see the rest of uh, <laughs> the question. Yes, I'll come over to your garage and clean your garage. I am a specialist <laughs> in cleaning garage. You can eat off that floor. Do you floor. guys know each other? Because Ashley, <laughs> he, he cleaned out his own garage and 
both of both, our rooms. Both, both like of I do so. actually. Uh, but but I think it was Baker had a question about it, hand pieces. Uh, yeah, I mean we have there's Isolite has a coupler that goes on to the high speed suction uh, that can suck up you know any of the particles. Typically when we're removing attachments or any of the glue, we're not using water, so that minimizes some of the aerosol effect. But as of right now, we're really doing a, a two team effect. Either I'm removing those attachments or my team is, and one of us is suctioning. We've got the high speed suction. We usually cut those, those high speed suctions are fairly large. We cut them in half all the time anyway, just you get two for one kind of thing, but it gets it much closer to the tooth. And we just lay it right next to the tooth. So it sucks up everything. And so we're really minimizing the aerosol effect uh, as, certainly as much as we can. Uh, Hopefully that answered yeah. the question, but but actually another part of that is we've been minimizing the attachment protocol uh, for really a number of years. I mean, I'm not putting attachments on every single tooth, you know, anything that's white like some doctors do. We try to keep them to the threes and the fours, the canines and bicuspids, maybe sometimes on the laterals just to prevent any intrusive effect on the laterals or rotational aspect. Uh, but for the most part, we try to you know minimize those attachments. Now, when it comes to our protocol, let's say with refinement, what we end up doing for the last couple of years is that uh, when patients come in to have additional liners, they're going through their first round uh, of, of additional liners, is that my team automatically knows to scan them with the attachments on. Then I come over, I review that scan with the patient there or the parent or whatever, and I come out ahead, this way I'm not defensive. And this way I'll say, I, there's a black triangle between these two teeth, that tooth's still rotated, your, cut, your bite's not coupled, I use the occlusalgram to look at my hot spots, I don't want to see red on certain teeth, you, you know, you'll see often heavy in the red in the anterior, bio, posterior open bites. And so a lot of that has to do with, you know, us being able to look at that, that setup together. So I'm minimizing the removal of attachments at that point. And then if they come back for a second refinement, which is not as frequent, then they know to remove all the attachments at that point because we, all those attachments are either burned out, they've worn down, especially the optimized attachments. And in which case, if we do need some attachments in the second refinement, we, we can then add, add them on sparingly. So we really remove the, um, the barrier of having to remove all these attachments and then scan and then come back in two weeks or whatever and put them all back on. We, we've learned from, that, that patients hate that. Adults do, do not like that. Leave the attachments back on. If you feel like there's an attachment that's critical, to a rotation, you can always do it virtually. And then, so line will remove them virtually, you can then put them back on, and then you can, uh, you know, the next appointment, so. Yeah, but just another reason, you know, we, we listen to what the consumer wants, but now we really want to bring that into post-COVID because we want to have less, less air. You gotta be smart about that. Yeah. You gotta leave these attachments on. You know, you don't want to be removing them unnecessarily and, and then remove them at the end. And then when we use, we use Vivera exclusively for retainers, Remove them all at that point, scan for Vera, off it goes. And that's been the beauty of us really exclusively being with, you know, with Invisalign and Vivera and getting the four sets that we had a number of people that we already had the scan. And so we were able to, you know, 3D print four more sets for them. So I think all of us need to kind of migrate in that digital journey. And Nicole and I often, we have a course that we give for a line, it's called the PDW course, the Practice Development Workshop. We, we uh, helped create that along with David Walt uh, about three years ago. And, and we, we kind of drilled down into the efficiency model you know, of all this. But when we're talking to doctors, if you're at 20%, let's say, you know, line of therapy, go to 30%. Whatever you do, don't go backwards. Because what we're gonna see is that this digital model it can't be scaled unless you have a tipping point of at least 80% digital. Uh, and, and, and we all need to kind of migrate, certainly not that, that direction, but having brackets that are broken and wires that are poking and glue that we have to remove, you know, this, this is serious, serious stuff that we don't know if this is gonna continue in some way um, for the time being or for the you know, coming year or two. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for Thanks spending for the last hour with us. We yeah. appreciate it. Uh, we hope that you've taken away some pearls, some some things to take back to your practice. We're all in this together. We are by no means experts at how to come back post-COVID. We're just sharing kind of things that that we've put together 
And as a community, I think sharing ideas back and forth is what what makes us get through this well. And and we're we're all in this together. So. And I'd like to thank Propel for sponsoring this. Uh, like I said, we we obviously are, are big fans of Propel. We're KOLs of Propel, but I, I got to tell you that this has been a game changer for us uh, in being able to leverage vibration during this time. And if you haven't used it yet, try it. See what how it works for you. And uh, if you need a if you need to reach out to us, um, just talk to your Propel rep, and um, more than happy to have you uh, contact us. And if you ever want to come to our, our office, to our immersion course, let us know, and There's a little we'll, plug. We'll, we'll show you everything we're doing. Okay. All right. Take care. Good luck, and all the Thanks, best. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.